Hello! In this video tutorial, we will make teal and orange grating in 3D LUT Creator. I have this picture here and we will change it to look like this one, almost. So what is the teal and orange? It is the shifting of all colors of the image to two colors, orange, which is usually the color of skin, and teal, which is bluish green. The original picture has orange and teal, but there are many other colors. There is maroon and blue. There are also many shades of gray. The skin tone can be left orange as it is, so I need to make the rest of the colors teal. If I didn't have 3D LUT Creator, I would have to use the white balance and curves as traditional tools to change the neutral colors. Let's use white balance to paint neutral colors. The color of the neutrals seem right, but the skin turned green. Now let's use the curves. To do this, I bend the red curve down and raise the blue curve to compensate for the greenish tint. Again, the neutrals look good, but the skin turned blue. If I continue to use traditional tools, then I would have to use masks, but using masks is always a long and painstaking task and you often get ragged edges. Therefore, I will not do that with the traditional tools. Instead, I will move on to the possibilities of 3D LUT Creator. Here at the AB tab, we have a color field. Neutrals are in the middle. If I take the center point and start to shift it to the blue, the neutrals will get the needed color. At the same time, on the grid, I can see how I changed the transition from the neutral to the saturated color. If I move the neutral colors towards teal, the more orange the color is, the less it will move. The orange skin changed to teal, but not as much as when we use the curves. But I wish that the skin was not shifted to the blue at all. Therefore, I find which point represents skin color, this one, and move it back. Now only the less saturated colors will become teal. The highly saturated shades of orange will stay in place. Let's look at the before and after pictures. As you can see, the skin color doesn't change. Let's look again at the picture. We have a lot of teal color, teal walls, teal floor, but we also have maroon and blue. The maroon could be repainted to teal, but it would be better not to because lips and blush have a maroon tint and they could become green. So instead, I repainted the maroon to orange. They are close and the tonal transitions will not be distorted. And there is a blue color, which is easy to shift towards green because it is close to the rest of the colors. And we've got teal and orange grading, just like here. But of course, it might look better. Let's analyze why. First, let's look at the wall. It's uniformly blue, especially in the light areas. The teal color looks very saturated. Second, the highlights on the skin were originally neutral. Now they have become teal. To solve this problem, let's disable this effect in the highlights. To do this, I turn off the highlights button. As you can see, it fixes the highlights and now the wall has some color variation. It is less teal in the lights and saturated in the shadows. Now I would like to increase the saturation of the skin tone. To do this, I will move the point from the center of the orange range farther from the center, like this. And as we move purple and blue to the upper left, then I move all other points that are between purple and blue in the same direction. In this photo, we don't have such colors, but to ensure that we get a universal color correction, it is better to avoid the long distance between neighboring points. And finally, I can add a little contrast. The skin saturation should be decreased a bit. You can now adjust the point at which the contrast is enhanced. That's what we've got. Here is the original photo, and that is the result. So we prepared the first version of the teal and orange grading. Note that I used the color model HSPE. Let's reset the settings and choose the LAB color model. Let's try to do the same in the LAB. I fix the middle of the orange tones and shift neutrals. Also, I turn off the effect of the highlights. The result we have is much less natural. For example, notice how cheeks, feet and hair turned blue. This is due to the fact that in the LAB color model, dark colors are considered less saturated, so they moved with neutrals. This is why it is better to not use color models such as LAB and YUV for this purpose. Let's consider the second way to do it. I did it on the AB tab. Now let's do it on the CL tab. At the CL tab, I turn the grids so that on the second grid, 
the orange color is located on the right side as far as possible. That is, in this case, the second grid goes through the orange and cyan, and the first grid goes through magenta and green. I have again the same task. I need to move everything that is not orange towards blue. Let's see where we have orange. You can see that on the distribution, the orange color takes this area on the grid. The higher on the grid, the closer it is to the neutral axis. So I pin the points here that will protect this area and move everything under it. I will move it to the left towards the blue. For example, like this. Since the area of the skin was practically untouched, the skin tone stays the same and the neutrals are shifted towards blue. Now let's take a look at the top grid. Orange and teal colors are in the center, as they are projected onto the center of the first grid, but the magenta and green are offset from the center of the grid. Therefore, we can pin the center and fold the grid in half. Here is the before and after. I slightly add contrast, Let's look at the color transitions. There is green here due to chromatic aberrations. Green is on the left side of the first grid, so we can also move it to the center. For example, like this. Despite the fact that this region is in bokeh, we see that all color transitions are smooth. As you probably noticed, bokeh is the part that shows the mask error the most. Here, there is a small heterogeneity. The transition from the neutral to the brown goes through the blue. To fix this, I find the area where it happens and straighten the grid there. Done. As you can see, there are no artifacts at the transitions. So here's the final grading. Here's the before and after. I hope this video was useful to you. Stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and put likes. Goodbye.